there was a there was a midget car come onto the scene. I think that was in the fifties as well. That was built by Allards. And yeah. You drove it. What what was behind it and what was it like? Well, in actual fact, it was a move afoot. Well, just to get car racing on speedway in England. But the the move was going to be that the riders were going to ride their bikes, and then the second half was going to be their cars. So. Sydney Allard built this car, which, in actual fact, I didn't like from the point of view where the motor was mounted and everything else, but I said I'd test drive it at Wimbledon. And the motor played up to start off with, because the fuel tank was mounted in the wrong position. We finally got those things sorted out. It was going around okay, still slower than a speedway bike, but only by about a second a lap, and this was the first time out on it. And then I turned it over and broke my collarbone. So I think that sort of dried a natural death then. They were going to actually get the speedway riders to drive the cars? Yeah. Would that have worked? It could have, because I've even forgotten the guy's name now, but he started up a load of speedways in England just with cars, and that came on quite good. Right, can we have a, just have a... Ronnie, what... Uh, what do you remember as your best meetings? What meetings have you enjoyed the most? Ooh. Got anything that stands out in your mind? That's debatable. But really, I think it's got to be ones where you're representing your country. New Zealand, or oh, back a little bit, we could feel the team that used to beat England. And we've been over and beaten the Swedes, we've beaten the Danes and things like that. That and well best pairs which we dominated, New Zealand dominated for quite a few years as well. I think that is a much nicer feeling when you're winning, but you're winning for your country, a lot much nicer. Yeah. Well, who, who would be your hardest opponents? Who, who, you, who was hard to race and for what reason? <sighs> Ivan would be one of them, because he was such a fantastic starter in that psychologically he had me beaten in that I knew, except for one tell every hundred times, he was going to be in the first corner before me, so I was going to have to work like hell to get him. And of course nine times out of ten there might be a couple of others in front of you as well before you could get to Ivan. And Ollie, Ollie Olsen, he was another one because he was a fantastic starter. You could get Ollie better than you could get Ivan, but Against regular established gators, it's real hard. But do you think that, you know, the, the, the Ivans and the Ollies, do you think they were catching you maybe when you weren't at your best or the machinery no. changed? You know, that on the yeah. Jap era, you could miss the start and pass people. Yeah. I think when it changed to the Jawa, it was a little bit more difficult to pass. It was more difficult for me fundamentally because I was the last person in England on the jab and the Jawa frame doesn't grip like Lumbermatically I was on gripped and it took me a little while to get established on the Jawa in actual fact but you just didn't have the drive. That's where I'd love even now today to hop on a jab and go out to the track and race against well, some of these latest four valves but I think they'll get a shock that what that old jab could do against some of those four valves getting the grip. Yeah. Well the speedway is really about getting the grip isn't it? You can be over horsepower because there's, there's a certain speed you can go around the track and I think that that the grip is the whole whole thing. They develop the engines and the frames are the same as what they were yeah. 30 years ago just about. I would like to see all the tracks in and get a bit of dirt back on them. But then you would prove who was riders and who were the people going to disappear straight out the stadium because half the tracks now, this is only for my reading, I mean I did that one little trip and that was the same, that sometimes you could fill out the program out the first corner because that was the result of the race. There was hardly any people passing. I mean in our days you could pass someone and they'd pass you and then you'd pass them again that might go on four or five times in a race but it just doesn't happen now. Would would you like to be, if you, it's impossible to do it, but would you like to be racing now with the, the way that tracks are and the bikes are if, if you was a young man? No. 
definitely not. Because, I mean, this is only what I'm reading and hearing all the time, but the tracks are so slick and all the rest of it, that fundamentally some tracks it's just impossible to pass. Even though you've got the ability to pass, it's just too slick. You're just burning your tyres out, you're burning your motor out, you're burning everything out. I mean, in our days, we could use that same tyre for 10 or 12 meetings without wearing it out. But now, you can't even get through a damn meeting on a tyre, and that's ridiculous. What, what can you see that can be done for Spiro to, to improve the show? More than anything else, just to get dirt back on the tracks. It's going to slow the racing a little bit till people learn and can handle it again, but they're not going to be screaming their motors, their motors are going to last longer, all their equipment's going to last longer, and the spectators are going to get racing, not bloody processions. Ronnie, you, you, your Speedway career finished because of a bad crash. D do you feel sad about that happening because of Speedway? Do you feel you know, unhappy because it was Speedway, or does the winning and the racing of it was oh. part of the danger? It is. You, it's a thing. It's a thing you've got to accept. I mean, my head banged up, broken arms and legs and things like that. But that's nothing. That's an accepted thing. And, but the thing which annoyed me on that crash more than anything else was I had another month to go and I was finished Speedway anyway. And to have it happen like that, well, it was damn annoying and it was frustrating to be flat on your back for nine months not being able to move. And well, I got to the stage where I had to put my head through the window at one stage. But I mean, that's all over now and it's all accepted, but, oh. It's, it's a thing that's there and every rider's got to accept that it can happen. But you never think it's going to happen to you. No, I, I, we asked Eric Gunderson the same question, and Eric was, well, that's the danger, and that's what I, I went into it with my eyes open. That's one of the things that can happen to him. Yeah. It's definitely a thing that any rider has to accept. That, I mean, you can be the best rider in the world, but that's immaterial. Something can happen, and bang, that's it. And it just depends on how you land. You can get up and walk away from the most horrible looking crash in the world and then you can have a simple plain overslide but you can't get up from that one sometimes. Do you think the safety within Speedway is good enough? Oh fundamentally yes, I mean I haven't seen a lot of tracks in England now as long as they're complying with the regulations fence wise and all the rest of it okay but there again if they had more dirt on the tracks they would be safer. Do you, have you any idea how many riders have been killed in English Speedway? I don't know the exact number, but in actual fact, it's got to boil down to fundamentally one a year, nearly, over the period of time. Well, I mean, you had years where you had two or three with nothing happening, but then you had one year where we had three. Would right. it surprise you that it's 110? Hell, yes. I didn't think it was anywhere near that. Uh, well, at the Hall of Fame I did it and there's 110 people. Gunderson's book starts off, he was going to be a number 111, but he Hell. didn't like that very much. That is a shock. That's a real shock, that is. Do you feel that sometimes you've been asked to race in uh, unfair circumstances? Well, no, not really. I mean, there's been wet meetings where the track has been real dicey and it has been a matter of both teams agreeing just so that promoter can get that meeting under his belt but it's been ridiculous the speed we've been going round because just couldn't get any grip the spin and things like that but not really we've had anything well I haven't anything really crucial it's really gone against the grain to ride against I mean you also got your opposition got to accept all this as well so it still works out even. 110 is a lot of people, Ronnie. It is a lot of people. I just didn't realise it was anything like that. Well, when I, when I went through the list, I probably personally knew to say hello to probably one third of it, and it, yeah. it shook the hell out of me. That is a shock to the system, in actual fact. I thought it'd be 15 or 20. Yeah, it's, no, it's, it's absolutely amazing. Hey, Ronald. Sour note to finish off. I just wonder what you. <laughs>